what I'll be mostly talking about is um, mostly how Tiger Beetle uses Zig, and as well as how DuckDB could use Zig, if you guys get very good interest. <laughs> Take notes. Take notes, yeah. All right, so when we're writing a database, um, you have to decide like what language you're going to do it in. Uh, there's some criteria that we have to look for, because technically you could write a database in anything, but you probably shouldn't. So if you're trying to pick a language to write a database, one of the things we're looking for is being explicit. So that means being able to know like what each operation does and how or where. So this kind of excludes some other languages that does some implicit stuff on the side, depending on like if it does implicit memory allocations for like our static allocation stuff, or if it does some implicit runtime uh, overhead that may be hard to track or may be hard to reason about. Um, another criteria is it has to be low level. So we're dealing with a lot of like disk low level um, memory control, uh, I.O. control, like what the storage engine does. Um, to enable determinism, you still have to go even lower level just to make sure there's no like runtime management system doing something that you don't expect. So low level is one of the properties. Um, another property is that we need something that is understandable. So you could technically write a database in assembly, but I don't know if you <laughs> would. <laughs> but it's it's possible to do that, but you shouldn't because it's harder to understand assembly at a macro scale. So we wanted something that is still easier to understand even for the complex software of a database. So we picked Zig for that. So those are one of the few reasons, but there's some other reasons I didn't touch on because everyone uses Zig for a different purpose. Um, for what I might use it for something else that Euron might use it for if you're looking at it from a business perspective. Um, Phil might use it for looking at it from a consumer interaction perspective, but there's different reasons to use Zig and I might go into some of them. Actually, the ones I'm gonna go into are more um, technical related, but you can ask the others for some of the other cool reasons I use it. So um, this is kind of a non-common one, but some of the features that we use it for are some for safety. So what I mean by safety is that, like we get some quality of life stuff. So we have slices. So all your um, array bounds or array accesses are bound checked. Um, that's the C++ equivalent. We also have uh, value type arrays. So not just array pointers, but like actual arrays that you can pass around um, that own the data that they that they uh, reference. This is useful for passing around array pointers. So it's still it acts like a C pointer, but the length is encoded inside the type. So it still does bounce checks without the overhead of adding that extra length at runtime. So it's kind of like bounce checks for free. Um, we also have value checks. So there is SCD variant. If you're familiar with C++. It's not the nicest API to use, but Zig has unions, which are even nicer, because you have at least, like, at least a little bit of pattern matching to it to make it nicer to get values out and create variants from. We also use optionals, so this is like nullability, but at the type level, so you have to check it every time you um, unwrap from a null to actually use the value. And we also have arithmetic checks. This is one of the ones that C might not have, or at least designed in at the moment. So in SIG, all integer overflow is defined to be um, to be something called illegal behavior. There's different categories. There's undefined behavior, illegal behavior. Illegal is ones that ZIG knows about, and you could, um, I guess by case-by-case -case basis, turn it into undefined for performance, like for unchecked math. But by default, it's checked, so it'll panic if it reaches it. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like address sanitizer or UB san if you guys use some sanitizer in C++. But Zig kind of has that like built into the language semantics. Um, it's also really, really explicit about how you do shifting. So you can't shift, like do bit shifting with the integer. You have to bit shift with a casted integer down to the type that can fit in that bit shift. So you have to cast it to like a U5 or a U4 for um, like U32s. Well, speaking of, Zig has like smaller integer types, so arbitrary integers for free as well. 
and you have to be explicit with the casting. So you can't um, you can't downcast without a explicit like call. You can upcast uh, without a call, so you can go from U8 to U32, which is generally fine. But you can't go down from U32 to U8 without saying how you want to do that. Like you want to truncate the bits, you want to um, check if it's in the range of a U8, then I'll panic if it's not. So like some it's explicit and the safety features like wrapped into one. Um, another thing we use it for is for deterministic control flow. So this might come as a surprise, but ZIG doesn't have operator overloading. It also doesn't have destructors, which sounds kind of limiting, but it's actually kind of freeing. So like, um, so what we, use, what we have instead is like a statement that can defer at the scope. So if you're familiar with Golang, it has defer, right? Um, Golang's defer, I believe, is function scoped, while ZIG defer is, is uh, like lexical scope. So it actually goes to like the actual scope boundaries instead of randomly at functions. So it's a lot more predictable. And ZIG also doesn't have move semantics. So we don't have to worry about copy constructors, move constructors, the other like 11 ways to initialize stuff in C++. But uh, yeah, you get the gist. It's just less, less stuff to think about for how code can jump around pretty much. Um, yeah, I explained defer, but we also have error defer. So Zig has a concept of errors. It acts like um, checked exceptions. Does that make sense? I don't know if you any of you use uh, Rust, but Rust has like an error system that's similar to Zig, but uh, theirs is a bit more extensible, but slightly also a bit more complicated. Zig has um, a simpler version of that, but it still allows for like scope based cleanup and stuff like that. Um, label blocks is just like for weird control flow that you need like go to, but it has cases, but it's weird. But all of this is just really to simplify code review because databases adding a lot of features, I'm sure you guys are aware, and there's going to be a person that's reviewing those features eventually. And you want to have it so that at least when they put something in the code base, it's easily, you can easily see like what the code is doing. That's part of the explicit feature. It's part of the control flow feature. And so I think Zig just makes it easier because it's like C but with niceties and without some of the complexities of other languages. Another big feature of ZIG <laughs> is the comp time. So this is probably one of the well, most well-known features of ZIG. Um, it's kind of, let's say C++ const eval, but like turned up to 10 pretty much. So you can put comp time on any piece of ZIG code Granted, it doesn't do um, non comp time stuff like um, taking an address of an integer and then trying to do like some bit shipping stuff that's per platform or doing a system call or stuff like that. But you can technically do dynamic allocation at comp time because you can generate a comp time integer and assign an array with that size. And so that's definitely dynamic allocation if you can hack around that. So it's a lot more powerful than you might think. Um, also, comp time is... Um, after you play around with that, you can try actually adding the Zig build system to your project. This one's a bit more involved. You actually have to write some ZIG code, but you gain um, the ease, the easiness of the build system. So like, you don't have to deal with CMake. That might be well enough of a, <laughs> of a value proposition. Uh, but you also get all the other features like cross comp compilation, uh, dependency management, and just using a nice language. And if you're really feeling like it, you can actually use the language itself in a project. So I've been snooping around a duck DB code base for a bit, and I think extensions are probably one of the ways that are easiest to actually try out ZIG, because you have, I think you have static and dynamic loading extensions. So yeah, so you can try a dynamic uh, extension and then have it use ZIG to see if it works. So um, in light of this, I actually did some of the steps for you. Uh, <laughs> I ported the 
DuckDB's um, build system to ZigBuild already. So I have a branch. I looked through the um, I looked through the contribute uh, the contribution method, and it said not to create draft PR, so I didn't create a draft PR. <laughs> so uh, if you want to try it, you can go to that link. I can tell you about it later. But effectively, this is Zig's build system, and I had it be as unintrusive as possible. So it just parses your CMake files. So you can continue to use CMake if you want, and then you can try out Zig on the side, just like poke at it, just to make it either feature uh, feature compatible with your CMake, and then eventually replace it, or you can decide, ah, eh, this is might be too complicated, or whatever. It's up to you. But yeah, it actually like builds um, DuckDB. I've only had it building the uh, static library. I haven't had test and benchmarks running because I was on Windows and I had to get like pthread, but that's something you can solve if you want to. It's left as, as a user exercise. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, if, since the build system works, I actually cross compiled DuckDB on this Mac OS to my Windows computer and then tested that at links and I can actually call DuckDB code. So that's a feature I don't know if you guys already had, but I got it for free by just porting to the Zig build system. And yeah, questions? Sir. Yes. So I know you guys are working on your own Flickr project. Is that merged yet? Or? Um, so I think work started, correct me if I'm wrong, um, work started on the Flickr when the M1s came out and there wasn't any linker that supported their co-signature um, shenanigans. Yeah, and from so, another platform. Yeah, for cross compilation. Yeah. yeah. So Zig had to, um, I think they hired Jakub. He started on a custom linker for Zig that supported macOS uh, cross compilation. And then that kind of extended out into supporting ELF, supporting COF. Um, those are kind of experimental. I think right now we cross compile, we compile using our linker for macOS. We still use LD for Linux and Windows. We are eventually going to kick that out. Yeah, so the plan is like, I think at the moment we use LLVM for most code gen. Uh, I think there's some custom backends as well, not just custom linkers, but there's custom backends for yeah. x86 emulation, or not emulation, but uh, generation, uh, WASM generation. Sphere? Yeah. Sheet or Yeah. But yeah, but that one is, there's a guy from the Netherlands working on it, but oh, yeah. he's taking it easy, I think, lately. He's waiting for some advancements on, I guess, our side. Yeah. But yeah, um, self-hosted is kind of like the Zig thing, so it's not just a linker, it's probably going to be more. Mm -hmm. Can you use... Uh, does Zig have any runtime dependency that you can call program? Or can you create fully like native artifacts of like like on SA files and stuff? Yeah, so you can build um, static libraries. That's what I have. Well, I can build DuckDB as a shared library. Um, yeah, since it's the only dependency, you can have it bundle its compiler RT that handles like um, the arbitrary bit with integers. Like that has to have like some small shim runtime that LVM, LVM normally gives you but they can uh, bundle it inside your static executable. But other than that, it's like a C freestanding build in that what you build is what you get and it should be all you need. So we can like build Linux binaries that work across distribu distributions and stuff like that. That's cool. Does that um, and does it link to the C libraries itself or not at all? Like, does it link the GLC stuff? Um, there's two things for that. Yes, it can. But it doesn't need to by default. That's how we can do um, cross uh, Linux stuff. So we can just do the syscall directly. But for platforms that don't do syscalls, like FreeBSD, macOS, that links to libc. Um, you can also link to different types of libcs. So Zig packages Muscle and uh, glibc, but not just glibc, different versions of glibc. So you can have on Windows compile to glibc 2.23 or whatever and have that work. So. It's pretty extensive in the build process. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, because we have some uh, fun issues with that sometimes with like the Linux GLibc version mismatches. Yeah. yeah. Where like someone comes along on some CentOS version of uh, CentOS Red Hat, yeah. And they're like, oh, this doesn't work because you compiled on a machine from 2014. So <laughs> that's uh, a. <laughs> 
quite promising. And the extension stuff is also cool because we could potentially allow people to write extensions within the same format, which uh, yeah. might be nice as well. It's like a good intro to the language. Cool. Uh, one thing. Yep. Uh, if you go to the DuckDB website, there's, uh, the most important part is when to use DuckDB, when not to use DuckDB. <laughs> why you should not use this? Those are those are two questions. Yeah. Uh, so I originally had a part in here about why not SIG, but I didn't know if I was gonna have time for it. I guess I should have time now. But um, don't use SIG if you can't. There's there's multiple reasons why you shouldn't use SIG. One of them is if you can't keep up with the development process. So like, it's a it's a work in progress language. So there might be stuff that you have to work around for, but if you don't have anyone um, available to learn the language or learn the ecosystem, that's probably not something you should do because you might spend more time doing that. Um, another reason to not use SIG is if you already have like a system that's working already. So that might be a bit too much churn. Like if you don't want to use the build system, like you, if you're happy with CMake, uh, then you can stick to SIG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's but, well, um, I mean, we do say maintain it with ZIG, not rewrite it in ZIG. Yeah, so you don't have to actually like rewrite stuff in ZIG, but in the cases that you would, you'd have to learn the language, which is not that bad. It's actually, like this Hanya, um, when he first came out, he didn't know ZIG, and then we just implied that he would learn it, and he just learned it over like a weekend or something. Yeah. But yeah, so... It's easy to learn. It's just um, if you run into stuff, you might have to be active in terms of like finding workarounds because it's still in progress. It's not one point yet. That's one of the big things. But I think we have something trying to address this particular. Yeah, but mm, which is still a work in progress. But uh, I think that so for the other question about C plus plus. I think that Zig and C++ are very different languages, and if you are very comfortable with C++, you might like Zig, but you might also not like it. It's a very different style of programming. It's kind of like, you know how some people still prefer C over C++ today, even though C is limited in so many ways. There's a different philosophy, right? And I think there's the same dichotomy also between C++ and Zig, maybe also between Rust and Zig. And so, if your brain works well with C++ and abstractions and constructors and destructors right all over the place, uh, then you might just find Zig uncomfortable, and that's it. Yeah, I'm um, just so quick, Yona. I'm in the Rust space and the Zig space, so I see the value proposition of both. Um, I just use Zig because it's fun, and this community is actually building different stuff with it that I prefer. <laughs> so, yeah. So, because you can you can like compile or include like or import I guess C and C plus code in Sig, right? Um, yes, yeah, Sig has native support for um, importing C headers. Um, there's some stuff I can't translate. Like if you have like a macro that turns into like a curly bracket, that doesn't really make sense in Sig. <laughs> and there's some other complicated cases. But for the most part, you can like import C headers and then call that using Zig code. So you could like incrementally rewrite. Yeah, you can come from, like, <laughs> that's kind of the test, but yeah, you start with your compiler, start with your build system. The material in the blog post actually has a section, well, there, there are like uh, ancillary blog posts, where basically we go through that process for Redis, as in, we start using Zig to compile Redis, then we replace the make files with uh, a build Zig script. And then we start messing around. We, we put a new command in Redis, not even as a body, because the, the, the perspective in the blog post was I'm the maintainer of the project, so I'm not adding something as an extension. I'm, I'm like changing the thing itself. And so basically, you just add a, a Z completion unit. And that's it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Oh, did you? you yeah. No, no, no. Okay. I was going to suggest you do it, right? But oh, um, the C make thing. Is that. Is that built into SIG to be No, I literally, I, yeah, I read it myself. Gotcha. Um, oh, well. Actually, <laughs> actually, let me just commit that to master branch. <laughs> <laughs> let me just make that a little bit easier. Um, 
Let me see if I have, yeah, I have it open here. This is the DuckDB source code. And what I did for dbuild.tech here, hold on, is that, let me zoom in a little bit. So what I did is I tried to recreate what the CMake script does. So you can pass in the same um, flags like you would in CMake. Just like zig build, dsd, suss all your flags. Um, include paths. Basically what I did is I wrote scripts to literally parse the CMake, find your ad library calls, and then find all this, <laughs> find all this stuff like that, and then uh, build zig dependencies with it. So like for here, we have a add static library, and then we add all the includes paths, and then we add all the sources, C source files, and then we link this to the plus, and then we have like a hierarchical uh, library that links everything that we parsed out. So what that looks like is, um, yeah, let me just go here. And then we do zig build dash memory call. This is what the build system looks like. It's most of the stuff is cached, so it's going to be really quickly. But these are all the stuff that I dynamically generated from the CMake file. It contains all the uh, all the WDB um, CMake files. Yeah. Has anybody here ever tried to compile a LLVM? Yes. 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 <laughs> have, you, have you ever made the mistake of not limiting the number of parallel link jobs? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So this build system knows uh, you, you have to configure it in the build script, but you can configure for each step how much memory it should take and how much, or rather, how much memory you want, you, you expect that task to consume uh, as the upper limit. And using that, the build system knows how much, uh, how many, how much parallelism uh, how many tasks run in parallel without crashing your system? Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine a build system that doesn't kill your machine? <laughs> it's like we're getting a build system with static memory allocation. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, that's a new task. <laughs> yeah. It's a deterministic build system. Right? Yes. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can continue. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right.